Have you ever looked at your photography and thought, if I could only turn this into paying work, today's episode is absolutely for you if you've ever felt that way. Today we'll be discussing, today we'll be discussing, today we'll be discussing very key steps to transform the personal work that you do into actual work and attracting paying clients. So get ready to unlock your potential and let's get into some personal projects that can take your work to the next level. I hope you guys are ready for today's episode. Welcome, Casper. Welcome, Julie. Welcome, everybody else who's too shy to say hello. So personal work, the work that we choose to shoot for ourselves when there's no other client has the potential to be the work that is our paying work if we do it correctly. Now, what do I mean by doing it correctly? Many photographers want to be professional photographers, but they're just making photos. They don't know why they're making photos. They definitely don't know who those photos would be for. And then they put together a mishmash portfolio of photographs that aren't related to any specific thing or topic. And it makes it pretty hard for them to get work. So I've turned so many personal projects into paying work. I've turned ideas into paying work. Things that you try for yourself have no consequence, but I assure you, and for those of you who watch my episodes regularly, you'll know that I continually talk about how important it is to shoot personal work because personal work has the potential to turn into real work. So, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of personal projects that I started that ended up turning into paid work. And going back to when I first, you know, the work that people really know me for, the repeat that you'll see is the black background. I've been shooting on black since I was 19 years old. So 35 years almost. Um, so the shooting on black is a reoccurring theme and it's something that I do over and over in my work that kind of gives a sensibility of my ism. The next thing, what I'm showing you is portraits and those portraits is not how I started as a photographer. My portraits were my personal work. And had I not shot pictures, because I wanted to be a fashion photographer. I came into this business wanting to be a fashion photographer. So it was all about shooting hair, makeup, styling, pretty girls, pretty locations, blah, blah, blah. But it took an art director to say to me, it takes a real photographer to shoot everybody else. Anybody can shoot pretty girls, pretty men. Can you shoot everybody else? So that's when I really started to realize that portraits last forever. And I started to really dive in to my black and white portraits, which I was doing for basically free, just shooting my friends. That work, I actually started to get real portraits and real clients um, like the Globe and Mail. And those, that personal work of shooting portraits made a career for me. So the transition from me getting into this industry because I wanted to be a fashion photographer, that was my only goal. I wanted to shoot models. And in getting into the industry to shoot models, and today I have such a great episode planned for you today. You can see like, I can shoot fashion. And I really, really love shooting fashion. But in my particular market, there's not really a huge market for fashion here where I am. 
So I pivoted and I added portraits to the things that I did as a photographer. And when I added portraits, the whole world opened up. Everybody wants to be photographed by somebody who understands style, that understands aesthetics. So having a background as a fashion photographer really honed me into being able to, f to be the kind of photographer that can shoot Coco Rocha, but also Adewale and also rappers and also, you know, advertising executives and musicians like opening my niche to people really for me career wise at the time that I chose to do it really changed my game. Today, we're going to dive deep into some just absolutely mind bending photographers that are doing and have done just what I'm talking to you about. You know, in order to create work that aligns with who you want to work for, you need to know who you want to work for. For example, one of my viewers, he's in chat right now. His name is Casper. He is a car photographer. And in the beginning of his journey shooting cars, it was see a cool car, take a photo. So, oh, that's a cool car. There was no concept of backgrounds and like the car, there was no control over where the car was. Once Casper had the confidence to start engaging with car owners and asking them if he could photograph their cars and he then was able to control the situation a bit more and put these cars in the right scenario remove distractions and really make the car the hero once Casper started doing that Quickly now, he's shooting for dealerships and and like car brands and really putting out a portfolio that of personal work that actually is getting him editorial work and 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 jobs. And Casper's in chat saying, oh, yes, let's go, Casper. I'm glad you're here. So once you determine what your target market is, like really what it is that you want to shoot, now you're ahead of the curve because so many photographers, and I promise you, so many photographers don't shoot to get work. They shoot to make photographs. Guess what? We all shoot to make photographs. So what are you doing that's innovative, that's revolutionary, that's changing anything? When you look at your work, Who's going to hire you based on the work that you have right now? And if you can't answer that question, as I said in my last episode, you got to make new work. So, uh, if your target market, let's say, was luxury goods, say you wanted, and again, this is a big brain because what companies have more money than luxury goods manufacturers? So, what you would do is go to stores, buy high-end luxury goods, photograph them, and then return them. That's what you do. So now you've spent a thousand, two thousand dollars on a handbag. You've hidden the tags. Oh, by the way, before you do this, make sure that you check with their return policy, make sure that you can return that high ticket item that you've just bought, and then also treat it like a $2,000 bag, like wipe it with a diaper. <laughs> After you've hidden the tags, you can photograph this bag from all different angles, and then you can return the bag Say your wife didn't like it and get the money back that you can put back on your credit card. Now you've just created portfolio work of a luxury brand that you can now use to get work photographing that luxury brand. So, and other brands just like that. That's just one idea. Welcome, Vicky. I'm glad you're here. That's just one idea 
imagine creating a portfolio. You could flip it to coffee, like my very good friend Rohan. And I showed Rohan's website um, recently. But for those of you who haven't looked at Rohan's website and weren't here during that episode, Rohan really has mastered turning personal work into work that gets him work. He loves coffee, and during COVID, he was frustrated that he couldn't go out and make portraits, so he started to just shoot still lifes um, at his house, and that work ended up, I mean, he shoots work that gets you hired, and this is what his Instagram looks like, so through shooting coffee, added food, added all kinds of different accessories. And the more you practice, again, Rohan is a portrait photographer and started with portraits, but because of COVID and because of just all the time home, he started to really get into shooting other types of work. And you can see he does it very, very, very well. I'm really a fan of this photographer's work and he's one of my past assistants. I'm just showing you how I believe he's really nailed his niche and now photographs in such a way that generates jobs. I hope you guys agree. All right. So um, you use that personal work to showcase your portfolio and whether it's food and drink, like the categories that Rohan is going, you have to kind of think, is there lots of people in this market within my area or region that would hire me to do this? And likely, if you're thinking about the niches like automotive or transportation, if you're thinking about niches like food and drink, if you're thinking about niches like um, fashion accessories, cosmetics, like these are niches that there's multi-million dollar industries surrounding them. There's multiple brands supporting it. And there's millions of consumers buying into it. So um, you have to choose a niche that there's actually a niche. If you're thinking about weddings, if you're thinking about families, couples, this kind of thing, select a couple of families that are just beautiful people. They're beautiful people, they're mixed race, there's gorgeous kids, and offer to do free shoots with them in order to use these beautiful people in your portfolio in order to capture other people seeing the work that you did with them. Whatever niche you're thinking about, and also if families, babies, weddings, and that type, it's you're dealing more with people. You're not dealing with clients. And if that's your angle, my suggestion is marketing on Facebook because everybody, people live on Facebook. People who are planning events like that do it on Facebook. So um, do that and create that portfolio to attract those um, incredible clients. Let's get into a little bit of this week's inspiration. Now, I have some photographers that are going to absolutely break your brain. I'm so excited about sharing these photographers with you. And I want you to know that every photographer that I've selected for you today are at the absolute top of the field and each one of them have used personal work to not only start, but even when they're at a 10-year, 15, 5-year point in their career, certain personal projects that they chose to do on their own absolutely skyrocketed their career into the point where all of these photographers are household names. The first photographer that I have for you today is Rankin. And if you do not know the work of Rankin, Rankin is one of the most popular photographers in the world today. Based out of the UK, Rankin and another art director started a magazine called Dazed and Confused. You might be aware of a magazine called Dazed and Confused. 
Rankin was the chief photographer for Dazed and Confused during the main time of that magazine's life, and then went on to start Hunger. Rankin shoots people and fashion and portraits and beauty and advertising and so many different types of work and his style it, he's so technically amazing he's a photographer that is not necessarily loved i mean not everybody loves rankin but as far as an influential photographer for me who takes fashion and turns fashion into art and that's the thing that i just think is brilliant about all the photographers that i'm sharing with you today all of them use personal work to create art and then that insane artful personal work ends up being commercial work that gets them hired so i want you to see how far all the photographers that i'm sharing with you today push how far they go with their personal work and you can imagine how this work generates work now rankin owns hunger magazine um he shoots everything but i do have a couple of categories that i want to share with you now this beauty category that i just shared with you was quite wild but if you look at his second beauty category it's actually oh i don't want to call commercial but it's definitely clean, right? So you can see it still has it still has his sensibility in there. But you know, understand that that personal work is what's attracted the clients to him to get him to be able to make this work. Like, come on, this is so inspiring. I love Rankin. I love him so much. So, so, so much. And now I just want to show you some of his portraits because he's a prolific portrait photographer and has made photographs that you know. George Michael. Uh, like, y you should know Rankin. He's an incredibly influential photographer. Grimes. Pharrell. So... I just want to lastly show you now how he's turned this work into look at his clients and look at the work. The obviously we're going to be attracted to more some commercial work more than others, but what you know Rankin for the most is the Dove beauty campaign which was absolutely everywhere oops the dove beauty campaign was shot here in canada because dove oops i lost that image dove is a brand that is based here and um i know that he did shoot part of this campaign here um show me more Yeah, this is glitchy. Oh, there we go. So this is just some of the Dove Real Beauty campaign that Rankin shot. And really, when it, when you break down his photography, you can see he is a photographer of people. That is what he shoots. And his high energy, hyper color, 
um, technically beautiful work is why he's able to shoot with such a wide range from car photography to makeup beauty. Like, it, he shoots everything. And it's always people related. Um, but there's just such an energy with working with Rankin. He just, people just want him to shoot everything. So that is the first photographer that I have for you today. That is Rankin. Do leave a comment if you guys have never seen the work of Rankin. And also um, leave a comment if he inspires you to open your if your niche is people rankin's been a huge influence for me and you can see the type of work that i do it's very much modeled over rankin like it's very much modeled around the way that this photographer shoots musicians he shoots portraits he shoots fashion he shoots beauty like you can see the influence i hope next photographer i have for you this guy is a absolute master of three types people places and things and he started as a product photographer moved to the product on a body or on a model on figure then shooting full models makeup beauty then he added design and architecture this is a photographer named raymond meyer Raymond Meyer and this photographer's work, you've seen it. He shoots every beautiful um, perfume bottle that you've ever seen over the last 20 years. Every Calvin Klein, every Obsession, Marc Jacobs, this whole catalog that we're looking at right now is his work with Marc Jacobs. And I'm taking you through um, Raymond Mayer's work um, in, or in Meyer in order because the product photography is so inspirational and should be, should be so inspiring for you to just show you what you can do with a perfume bottle and some light. This is a very, very renowned photographer named Raymond Meyer. Let's look at the second one. Look at this. Tell me that this isn't just mental. Like, what? Look at this work. So, abs, look, tell me this doesn't remind you of something that Bear Thunder has done. Look at this with the glossier coming through all the bubbles. Hello, Bear Thunder, wherever you may be. Look how great this work is. Just using, um, what's it called? Mylar as, a, as the base. Look at these smudges. Like Raymond Mayer is a master absolutely uh, absolute master of photography and to be able to shoot things as strongly as this gentleman does let me show you another gallery hey how about portraits from the same photographer raymond mayer portraits kira knightley Scarlett Johansson, Tilda Swinton. Like, so, so incredible. Look at just design elements, adding food and fashion. Like, all the Calvin Klein, look at this. Like, look at his product photography. Please tell me you guys are inspired. Leave a comment under this video. Hit the subscribe button if this is inspiring and if you're absolutely inspired by photography and learning how to turn personal work into professional work. Look at this as a creative idea. Mixing things with fashion, so mental. 
Again, very, very great idea. This girl's in a cardboard box. So incredible. And if you want to see how absolutely influential, how absolutely influential this photographer is, look at this story. All you now need to do is look at a photographer um, from here in Toronto and know that this photographer is incredibly influenced by the photographer that I just showed you. This is Chris Nichols and Chris Nichols I know has been looking at Raymond My Mayer and looking at old school photographers like Raymond Mayer his entire career and look at the work that Chris Nichols creates. This is a Toronto photographer. And by the way, if you don't know, Toronto is an absolute breeding ground for some of the best photographers in the world. Some of the best photographers in the world come out of this city this is toronto photographer chris nichols and again if this doesn't show you that commercial work can be art and also if you shirt your personal work in such a way that will attract clients and they're gonna hire you to do the work that i'm showing you right now there's no limits are you pushing hard enough with your photography so Chris Nichols, Raymond Meyer, influences, yes or yes. So um, that is Raymond Meyer. So you can see how personal work can become professional work, yes or yes. Personal work can become professional work. This next photographer I have for you, he has just probably the best story ever. And the reason that I know this story is because I've heard him lecture. And I'm gonna zoom, I can't really zoom in on this website, but I'm gonna show you the picture. And this is the photograph right here. And if you look closely at this photograph, you'll see that that's Batman. And if you're wondering what Batman is doing in this photograph, he's smoking crack. And the reason that that's so fucking crazy that this is a photograph of Batman smoking crack is the story goes, Michael Muller is a photographer. He's from um, Persia, Iran, like that area. And uh, love photography, shot really early, moved to California, wanted to shoot movie posters couldn't shoot movie posters, just he couldn't get a break. He didn't know how to make his way into the industry. And I'm sure you know also on Sunset Boulevard, there's all kinds of people that dress up like all kinds of different characters all around the LA Sunset Strip. So my man, Michael Muller, my man, like I know him, I don't know him, but I'd love to, Muller, found a Batman and was like, hey, Batman, can I take some photos of you? And Batman's like, yeah, yeah, just a second. I just have to do this first and then you can take my picture. And what he had to do was go into the back alley and then do a little hit off his crack pipe before he went out and like entertained the kids. So <laughs> what Muller asked is like, hey, can I take a picture of you smoking crack? And Batman's like, yeah, man, no problem. So photograph of a guy in character dressed as Batman with a crack pipe. That photograph and the other photographs that I'm showing you right now ended up being in a gallery exhibition. This is the gallery section of his work that we're looking at. And this image was purchased by somebody who works at a huge movie studio, found out who the artist was. And that is how Michael Muller went from shooting Batman shoe smoking crack to the number one arts and entertainment photographer in the world. He shoots 
every movie poster you've ever seen was photographed by Michael Muller. And FYI, it started from him shooting personal work of Batman smoking a crack pipe, a real cracky smoking a crack pipe in a Batman costume. And because of that, this is the career that he's built for himself. So I want this today to be so inspiring for you. I want you to feel motivated. I want you to feel amped up. I want you to feel like I can do absolutely anything with my photography. That's how I want you to feel today. And I'm hoping that you guys are charged up and see if you have a dream and you know exactly what you want to do. I want to shoot movie posters. There's nothing that's going to stop you because you have the end game. You know what it is that you want to do. So you shoot work that is bananas. That's going to get that kind of attention. And then guess what happens? The universe happens. And that's the career that Muller has built for himself. Absolutely, absolutely inspiring. And I hope you feel it. Michael Muller. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Are you not absolutely blown away? Like, come on. Did you guys know about Michael Muller? Leave a comment in chat or leave a comment in the comments if you've never heard of Michael Muller. Although you knew there was a photographer that made all of these incredible photographs, but you just didn't know who it was. I'm glad that I'm the one who's bringing Michael Muller to you today. And again, today is all about the inspirational stories of photographers that have taken their personal work and created personal work in such a way that actually generates work. That's the only point to make photographs if you're trying to be a professional photographer. The only reason to shoot is to make photographs that will make you money. That's it. There's no other reason. Or to shoot photographs that are helping you develop a style so you can get to the place where you can shoot photographs for money. Muller is another photographer that is a master of portraits, of things, of places. He just loves people, he loves the earth, and he loves photography. And you, I mean, Philip Seymour Hoffman, this is the picture of Philip Seymour Hoffman that everybody saw when he passed. Who, who can make Vin Diesel look this cool? How inspiring is this for you guys? And you can see there is no real specific style. Welcome, Spetty. There's no specific style. Welcome, Jared, to his photography, except he's just technically talented. He's just technically talented. I mean, you've all seen this photograph of Brad Pitt. It was everywhere. So this is the work of Michael Muller. And if you want to dive into his personal work, I mean, not to met what? Do you want to see some covers? Do you want to see like, oh yeah, I came into the industry because I wanted to shoot movie posters, but guess what? <laughs> guess what? Kobe, Time Magazine? Like, guess what? Career. Guess what? passionate photographer that shoots photos whether he's making dollars or not and look at the career and look at the craft that this guy has built telling you man the real photographers shoot no matter what it's not about money it's not about money it's about the love of the goddamn game how about he learned how to scuba dive 
for the first time and saw a shark for the first time and then seeing a shark changed his whole life to now he sees them as majestic beautiful kings of the ocean and now his only mission is to save sharks so he swims with sharks and makes this personal work in order to conserve sharks so he's added films and a whole bunch of other stuff in order to be a conservationist because he went and swam with sharks and um put his life in danger <laughs> so crazy again this is his personal work just some of it i mean there's so much look at this so so great that's one gallery of muller's personal work and if you look at his expedition this is him traveling this is michael muller right there on the right like he just loves the earth he just loves photography he just makes photos everything shares it all you see like it's just so different you know oh look at that portrait he just loves photography you can see it right and we're gonna look at just one more one more gallery he did a crazy thing with kobe that i really wanted to show where oh that's on his other site but it's like oh my word like his underwater photography he he's just he's a gangster michael muller that's the next one that i had for you guys i hope you're inspired i'm just like i'm so amped today and i get so amped when i show you work that's at a level that i know in you seeing it it's gonna like shift something you know and again i'm realizing like i can't really fuck around excuse my language when it comes to um the type of work and the type of photographers that i share with you like the bar is so high but i also want to inspire you so you know that you can get there now the last photographer i have for you is a photographer that jill greenberg she's from canada she's from vancouver and she is famously known for this one particular story which are these crying babies that she shot in 2007 called end times this story got she photographed her own kids crying like as like a test on set and someone saw that photo and was like oh my god it's so beautiful photograph my baby like that and they brought their baby and how that how annie got them to cry was she would give them their favorite thing and then she would take it away and then they would cry and then she'd make the photograph and then she'd give it back and then when people heard that oh my god Annie, i mean jill was basically torturing children is what all the articles were saying she got really bad press about this story this editorial oh look at these photographs but what ended up happening is she actually got to explain her perspective and and when people learned that um two of these children are her own and then talk to the mothers who own these children own them <laughs> talk to the mothers and fathers of these children they were like no this was the best they had the best day it was so fun they had so much fun but she managed to create these insane moments so jill greenberg is the last of the masters of the personal work that i'm going to show you and i'm gonna dive into what happened <laughs> look at this photograph you can understand how this work changed her career changed it like changed it oh my word so this work 
and we're looking exclusively now at her personal work. What Jill does, I mean, I just want to, sorry for the scroll. I just want to start at the top and show you how Jill Greenberg shoots personal work and how she, she paints, which she started to do recently. This is photography and Jill was one of the first photographers that shot Digital Hasselblad, one of the first photographers that shot everything tethered and like really embraced digital photography. And literally her fine art projects, her paintings, uh, I mean, you can just see she, she just loves creativity. She makes color, ion, Photoshop, art, like, she really just pushes what she can do with the camera. And when she started shooting horses as personal work, she shoots everything for Animal Planet. Look at like she shoot. She brings a studio to the barn and creates these photographs like. Are you serious? So this is personal work that she shoots that she turns into books that end up getting printed on the cover of magazines that she owns the rights that they could be sold for stock like look at these photographs so um that's just the horses and she has so much of this personal work that she does with um this is all underwater and again, I'm showing you just the personal work first because the work that she does, you've seen it. You've seen it because it's everywhere. If you click into her work section, you can see commercially her photography looks like art. Commercially, the work that she does is just, and this is just one of so many of the styles. Like if you're wanting to know where this RGB look came from, it came from Jill Greenberg. She was doing this like 15 years ago. You know what I mean? So, and with gels, like not with RGB lights. So you can see, um, the photograph that I shot for Speculator magazine, how influenced that image was on Jill Greenberg and her light. Like, this is what her commercial work looks like. Like, it's bananas. And this is just one style that she can shoot in. I'm going to show you a couple more. And look at how, like, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Like, that's just a style. That's her, by the way. That's a self-portrait. Um, so let's look at the silhouette, which is another series that she does. And this is commercial work that she shoots this way, black and white, very specific lighting. Gorgeous, yeah? Oh. So, um, love. some commercial work that you've likely seen. The L word. I featured Jill quite a bit in my magazine rules video. I made a video on um, editorial magazine rules and really featured quite a bit of Jill Greenberg's work there. Um, so Jill Greenberg, do let me know if this is inspiring for you guys today. I'm hoping that it is. And you can see how, I mean, Dexter, uh, Handmaid's Tale. This is Jill Greenberg's work. Uh, did you guys know that Jill Greenberg shot The Handmaid's Tale and all of that, the movie posters? She shoots so many movie posters. I'm hoping for the female photographers out there, Jill Greenberg is inspiring you. Look at how technically insane her photography is. 
I, I want there to be no excuses. And her entertainment. Yes, this is when I say you've seen like so much of her work. How about all the artwork for Orange is the New Black? Jill Greenberg. I, as mentioned, Handmaid's Tale. Like she shoots so much. This is um, House of Lies, which is an incredible series. Oh, like technically beautiful work, eh? Hope you're inspired by Jill Greenberg today. The poster for Ted, Jill, House of Lies. So personal work turns into commercial work. Are you convinced yet? Are you convinced that you can do anything in this photography world? Like as long as you know what it is that you want to shoot, what area of photography that you want to get into, really, there's kind of no excuse. You know, today I chose to show you some photographers that I feel like are super influential and will break the average brain when it comes to quality technical ability i tried to spread it out through a few genres but you can imagine if that was your work any of the photographers that i shared with you so far how that would be like yeah this person would get work for sure i got a bonus for you because um we can't just share we can't just share four let's look at the work of zach gold and as we talk about the power of personal work and how personal work becomes commercial work. Look at the ideas that are coming out of the photographers that I'm sharing with you today. And then as I show you these photographers, ask yourself, fuck, am I as good as these shooters? Am I trying as hard as these photographers are? Am I pushing as hard as these photographers are pushing? Am I as creative? Are my ideas as high end? And if they're not, it means just this. It means you're just looking at the wrong photography. And it's so easy to correct. I'm helping you right now by sharing with you photographers from all over the world i actually want you to see this video clip that are doing incredibly creative things with their camera there's no limit to what you can do with cameras but if you don't look at what the best in the world are doing how are you ever going to be a household name like these ones are photography is a lifelong journey and if you're committed if you really really want to do this you have to know that so much of your time is research so much of your time is looking at what is actually happening in the niche that you've chosen. What's happening? Who is excelling? And what are, their, what are they sharing? Once you start to, oh, look at this photography. I'm just blown away by Zach Gold right now. If you guys are inspired today, I'm glad because that's what I'm here for. I'm trying to be a selfless person, a selfless photographer, and really 
give my time and give the things that I look at that inspire me directly to you. So I'm hoping that you're feeling it. This is Zach Gold and uh, this is his portfolio. So you got to ask yourself, if your portfolio was up against Zach's portfolio, who's getting the gig? So it makes you tell yourself, it's time to get into that personal work. I have another. I got another. His name is Rasmus Morgensen. Rasmus Morgensen. And clearly, you can see that this shooter shoots fashion. But the artful way that this shooter shoots very natural, very natural light, but has some of the biggest clients in the world should be inspiring for the natural light shooters out there should be inspiring for the photographers that haven't quite adopted to shooting in studio but still want to make a mark in the photography world this particular photographer should inspire you as far as how you can use texture color layered composition this photographer follows absolutely every magazine rule for shooting for magazines to the t um i'll say again if you haven't watched my um key steps for shooting for magazines um watch that video it's literally six minutes it'll change your life uh wow wow so rasmus morgensen yes no yes no you feeling it feeling it should be inspiring should be inspiring i hope it is all right let's go spetty all right i i mean i i can't stop i can't stop man i'm just amped today can't stop musilek 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 what is happening with this website don't you look at this website and think to yourself, wow, I should have gifts in my portfolio. Looking at this website, doesn't it make you think, wow, I could actually apply cars with my studio photography? Like, does this not like, look at this guy's photographs. I don't even know if it's a guy. Like, look at the idea ideas look at the ideas like if you guys aren't inspired oh look at the color studio light outside at night action blowing dress Look at that fashion light on this model. Oh, putting lipstick on, smoke coming out of the mouth. Look at these ideas. They just boom, 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 boom. Oh, look at that room. She's throwing a Frisbee in that room, which is absolutely a no-no. She's standing on the table. You'd never do that. Oh, oh, musilic. Tell me you're not going to want to hire this photographer to shoot a campaign, to shoot cosmetics, to shoot skincare. How about fashion accessories, things? Look at the still lifes. Look at how these are photographed. Look, tell me this photographer has not been influenced by Raymond Mayer, right? Now tell me this photographer hasn't been influenced by Raymond Mayer and how it's important to always go back to the masters, go back to the source, that first photographer that did that style. So you can see how that style, let's go Rosalind, glad you're here. You can see how that style influences out. Oh, Spetty. Oh, Spetty. <laughs> This is the work of Muselik. 
like i i hope i hope i hope this is inspiring for you <laughs> come on look at the work this photographer puts together look like what in the same portfolio oh so great we need to talk what a great way to sell your cortez you know those are nike cortez perfect oh this is musilek okay so that's work look at the other category play work play blog and now all personal work this is how you develop a portfolio oh so gorgeous yes or yes guys please share this episode if it's inspiring please tell a goddamn friend if you like this content how mental is this this is the work of Musilik, and this is the personal work. This is what this photographer does. This is play. This is what this photographer shoots, just fucking around. And this work gets work, yes or yes. Telling you, man, if you're not shooting photos just to shoot fucking photos, and if those photos aren't like, in, if you're not niched in, man, I'm telling you, and again, not every photographer I'm going to show you, you're going to get. Not everybody it, you're going to, but look at how important it is to blog. Look at how important it is to just share your insane ideas about photography. The smart ones do it. I use Substack, but you can see this one. This one's blogging, although not posting quite as often as I am. That is Musilek. And uh, there's one more photographer, and this photographer is super relevant because when I was 26 years old, I went to New York City for the first time. I had the pleasure of photographing Tony Bennett, Oscar Peterson, Legends of Jazz, but guess what else? I also sent a videotape of a four-minute television segment that was done on me with my very first solo show that I did at City TV two years before. George Pitts, the late George Pitts from Vibe Magazine, the photo director of Vibe Magazine, afterwards Life Magazine, afterwards professor of director of photography at Parsons Institute, looked at my portfolio and told me that I was good enough to shoot for Vibe Magazine. And then he took my portfolio, color photocopied it. I got a meeting with Vibe Magazine, like still kills me. He photocopied my portfolio and he reached behind him and he had a stack of photocopied portfolios that was taller than me sitting here. He put me on the bottom and he's like, okay, let me show you some portfolios of some photographers that came to see me before you. Let me show you this photographer. He's right from here, here in Brooklyn. And he pulled Jamil Shabazz. And he showed me Jamil Shabazz a time before crack, back in the day, photocopies of his 4x6s. And then he's like, that's Jamil Shabazz. Let me show you this other. And I'm like this. Like nothing like my work at all and then he's like and let me show you this other photographer his name his name's christian whitkin he's joel peter whitkin's son and that's the photographer that i'm going to show you right now and he pulled this photographer's portfolio and he showed me christian whitkin and that's who we're going to end off today with this is the photography of christian whitkin yes he is shooting portraits with a four by five camera Yes. Yes, he's shooting traditional film photography with large format cameras mixed in with his regular work. But this guy saw Vibe before me 
and you can see clearly that Christian Witkin's career has, he's done okay. I think you can see clearly that Christian Witkin has done okay. So today I'm here to inspire. I'm here to inspire every day, but you can find your niche. I knew I wanted to be a people photographer. I knew I wanted to shoot styly stuff, models. I knew I wanted to shoot in the studio. I knew I also wanted to shoot in location. And I also knew that I wanted people to remember me, you know, when I'm done with photography. So I, I, I'm carving out my little niche, but I want this show and these programs to be so little about me as a photographer and so much about the wonderful world of photography that we have out there for us. There's so many, so many incredible photographers that we can use for influence, so many incredible photographers that we can use for inspiration. We just have to look at them. And I know that today I put together a really cool collection of photographs. Know that collaborating with other creatives collaborating with makeup artists stylists set dressers food stylists makeup models people who can help you make your photographs better set builders people who are better at lighting you need to try hard because the column the caliber how can i say this the caliber of competition in 2023 is on a new level it's it's almost scary how how tough the competition is but you know that you can do this and you know that it's just a matter of figuring out what it is that you actually want to shoot like once you nail that, it doesn't have to involve people. It can be things. It can, like, just making photographs that move people, making photographs that speak without saying a, world, a word, that's your only role, to make photographs that speak without saying a word. If you can do that, you'll make a mark in this industry. But... If you're not shooting for yourself, if you're not targeting that market and creating work for it, if you're just shooting willy-nilly, you're not going to be working. The competition is too fierce. The people who are working are targeting their market and they're making work specifically for that market then they're calling that market cold calling and reaching out to those people and sharing that work and finding out how they can be of service to those clients that need them it's all about being of service to people if you follow that mentality when it comes to creating work looking for work building your portfolio There'll be no issues. You'll be rocking and rolling. <sighs> you call yourself a photographer. Look how you're dressed. Yes, you. You just wear track pants, t-shirt. If you're gonna wear track pants and a t-shirt, at least look fly like me. Here, take this. Right? How fly do you look now? You guys want to get the flyest apparel for creatives and photographers. You got to tune into that merch store. There it is. Look at, I have over a hundred items spread between two merch stores, limited edition drops, every video that you watch on YouTube, as well as on all my channel pages. You'll see the links for my merch store. Make sure that you guys jump in there and look fly like I do when you're shooting. Let's get it on. So for the first time ever, much to many of your happiness, I dropped five very, very limited edition t-shirts. 
I've never put a photograph on a t-shirt and this is not going to be here long. You can get my one of a kind Pharrell Williams tee on white or black. It has a credit date and copyright hit on the shoulder. I've put together five photographs this way. Tom York, 1997 in Toronto, a week before OK Computer. Pharrell's No Hander, No Footer. DMX, the late DMX, up close. Oh. And my second image of DMX um, smoking a blunt. All of these are available from now until the end of the month on my merch store. The link is in the description of the video that you're watching. I hope you guys cop one. I'm going to make some more photo tees if these actually fly. If people buy them, you'll see more. If people don't, they will disappear and you'll never see them again. Guys, I hope you feel all the key points and the necessities today for turning personal work into, into creative commercial work. I hope you also see today that it's possible to be a photographer, but actually create art. And that art, commercial clients will hire you and pay you top dollar to do that if you take it seriously. You can see today that all the photographers that I shared with you, all of them take photography incredibly seriously. All of them push their photography career really, really far. And all of them have hit levels of success that um, I haven't hit yet, but I'm modeling what I'm doing over what I'm teaching. The reason that I'm able to teach it to you so clearly is because I've also been going through some one-on-one -on -one consulting, helping me get my photography to the next level. Some of the things that I'm teaching you right now is some of the things that my creative people have been teaching me. I also have a few spots left. It seems like every day another photographer signs up for my mentorship program. Because you've watched to the end of this episode, my mentorship program might be for you. I can take on 10 photographers. This mentorship goes on for two or three months, depending on you. I'm trying to rotate as many photographers as I can through this program. If you're interested, you can hit the link that's um, on the top of my like header thing. It says... Um, mentorship program or in my about page it's there too or it's on my website guys if you have any questions i am definitely here there's a big glare on that well you asked for them speddy you can't ask me to put on sunglasses and then say hey buddy there's a glare from that piece of notes that you're looking at right there that i'm moving right there on my glasses well that's what you get when you tell me to put them on speddy you can't have it all the ways. Guys, I, I hope you guys appreciate my content. I'll be here back again on Thursday for your favorite show of the week, which is diving into some photos. I'll probably give you some other content alongside those photos unless I look at that folder and there's tons and tons of photos. If that's the case, it'll be photo reviews only. So if you'd like to have your work reviewed by a professional, please consider joining the Discord, which is the most fastest growing photography community in the industry, according to me, and no stats. Um, I'm dropping the smoke. I hope you guys feel like uh, this content is smoke. Like, if you don't, if you don't, I don't know what to do. Like, I can't. I can't do anything if you're not feeling so. But I will do better the next time if, in fact, you are feeling like I'm not giving you. I really just want to give you high-quality content. That's all I'm trying to do. You know that. You know that. Make sure you join the Discord. Make sure you submit photographs. Make sure you're subscribed if you like this, my new voice, and uh, how I'm trying to bring you this with love and humor. 
Guys, thank you so very much for watching today. This has been Ask a Photo Pro. We are at season four, episode 30. I have thousands and thousands of hours of free educational content here on YouTube for you, the emerging photographer. Dive into something else and I will see you guys on Thursday. I love you all. Make sure you call your mom. If you guys appreciate the content, make sure you drop it a like. If you guys like the content, you can go back and make a clip. You can share those clips to all your social networks. Clips, likes, comments on this program, propel it. We're trying to blow this stuff up. We're trying to blow up this channel. I can't do it without your help. Please tell a friend about my podcasts and my education system and we will see you guys on the next one or the next video i'll be right there if you click this right now okay bye-bye now bye 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 thanks